Hello, friends. This episode is sponsored by Word of Life. Word of Life is a religious education curriculum that calls students, parents, teachers, and catechists to pursue holiness in their everyday lives. Created in partnership by the Augustine Institute and Ignatius Press, Word of Life helps Catholic schools and parishes meet the challenges and opportunities of proclaiming the gospel today. Word of Life uses four key themes to awaken an authentic Catholic identity and demonstrate how the truths of the faith speak to the human heart. The curriculum strives to support parents in their role as primary catechists of their children. Through interactive activities, videos, and other digital resources, students and parents can benefit from faith formation materials in the classroom and at home. The Word of Life curriculum explores who we are as human persons, what our purpose is in life, why the faith is relevant in our modern culture, and how to live a truly integrated life of virtue through the grace offered by the church. Word of Life is proud to serve over 50,000 students in more than 700 schools and religious education programs across the United States. Learn more about Word of Life and how to bring it to your parish or school by visiting wordoflifeseries.org. That's wordoflifeseries.org. We hope you enjoy this episode. Well, hello, dear friends, and welcome to season 12 of the Abiding Together podcast. We are so excited to be back with you for another season. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. And we have people from all over the world on this walk together, and you are most, most welcome. My name is Sister Miriam James, and every week I'm joined by two of my very dearest friends, Michelle Benzinger and Heather Kim, and we speak about what the Lord is doing in our life, the movements of the Holy Spirit, what is breaking our hearts, what is healing us, and where the Lord is leading us to deeper relationship with Him. So wherever you find yourself today, wherever that is, you are most welcome. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast, and welcome to the second series on our series about Lent. So we are walking through Dr. Bob Schutz's book, Be Transformed, about the sacraments and the healing power of the sacraments and healing identity and mission. And if you are just joining us, you're most welcome. Last week, we had on uh, Dr. Bob to talk about the book and, and a bit some of the facets of the book. So you can listen to that episode and join us here. You can jump right in, but uh, wherever you find yourself, we're glad to have you along. So happy Lent and welcome to this week. Heather, Michelle, how are we doing? Michelle, what's going on, girl? I'm just hopping along. I'm still wearing my nice little cast boot and I know, but (laughs) so sad (laughs) it is, but you know, just part of life. And yeah, it's a beautiful day today in Florida and just on the journey with you guys. Mm -hmm. Heather, how are you? Good. I've been traveling a lot more than normal. Mm -hmm. And so that's been kind of fun in some ways to like see different people and going to these different places. But I was in Toronto recently and it was like minus 22 Celsius, Celsius. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it was like minus eight. It's still cold. No, what? Yeah, cold. No, No, that's cold. Like I felt like my hair was just going to break off into pieces and then I was going to come back bald. (laughs) Um, But (laughs) but it was great to be with everybody there. So yeah, so it's been pretty pretty fun. Pretty busy, but pretty fun. Yeah. How about you, Mm -hmm. sister? How are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had a lot of adventures too, to cold places and to warmer places. And right now it's um, windy outside. I'm in the great nation of Texas again. It's windy outside. It's 75 degrees, which is like bizarre. It's like windy and 75. You know, you do what you got to do. Because we're old, we have to talk about the weather because that's what we do. That's what we do. And there you go. Thanks for the Abiding Together weather report. (laughs) Brought to you by Abiding Together podcast. (laughs) Open the door, stick your head out. You can figure out your own weather. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So we are going to go ahead and jump into chapters two and three of Bob's book, Be Transformed. And we just want to tell you on the outset that Every we were just discussing this before we started recording that every single chapter of Bob's book is packed. It, it is packed with incredible things, and we also want to give you just full permission that if you find that there's a chapter or a part of a chapter you just need to stay with for a week or for two weeks or for the whole of Lent, we just want to give you full permission to do that. Please do not rush along just because we're going to continue on the path. We we want to be able to give you a place just to rest and to be. And I I really believe, I know for myself, like going through this myself, I really believe there are going to be things for every single one of us that are going to be Mm life-changing. And it's going to be what the Holy Spirit is saying to each one of us. And we want to give you that permission just to to rest and to be. Even if you're doing it with a book study, don't worry about it. Like let everybody else can continue or whatever you need to do. But just to be able to sit with this and to absorb, it's so profound and so rich 
And it's so much grace and like so many jewels in this treasure box that we don't want you to miss a single one, especially the one that the Holy Spirit wants to give you. So before we dive into, we're going to talk about chapters two and three today. And so we're not going to get to everything in every chapter. So just to let you know that, but we're going to pull out some of the highlights that have been speaking to us and kind of frame it for you. But just to give you full permission, just to be wherever you are and know let the Lord speak to you. So Heather, Michelle, you want to add anything about that before we talk about chapter two? Yeah, like as we were recording this in real time, we actually were going to record two episodes this morning and we had to step back and say we can't because there's too much information in each one. We don't want this just to be informational for you. We want this to be incarnational for you all and for us. Mm -hmm. None of us need more information in our lives. Like we are, we're bombarded by information. What we need is an incarnational experience with the Trinity for that to transform our life. So go at your own pace. And Bob did a beautiful job of after every chapter, there's a lot of exercises. Mm -hmm. I was just telling the women that I got stuck on even the scriptures in two or three of them. I couldn't get past that. And so just allow the Holy Spirit to set your pace for this Lent because he knows exactly what you need and what your heart needs. And our desire, our deepest desire is for transformation like deep transformation in your own spirit and soul and heart. And we really feel like the Holy Spirit is going to do that. Mm-hmm. Heather, do you have any thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my one thought is don't mm-hmm. run away. That's my thought. Whatever's coming up, don't run away. Just try to stay there with Jesus. Don't stay there alone. Oh my gosh, don't mm-hmm. stay there alone <laughs> with the word. things that come up. Mm-hmm. Don't stay there alone, but stay there with Jesus. And if you need someone to come alongside you, that's why, you know, we always say like, find a great counselor or sit down with a friend or a spiritual director or parish priest or whoever it might be, like just somebody that can hold some space with you for some of the difficult things. God wants to heal and the things that are coming up and maybe he's putting his finger on, it's not because he wants to disturb you or hurt you. It's because he wants to set you free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm, That's a good word. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we're going to talk about the chapter two, which is titled God's Powerful Blessings. And we want to frame all of our time with the letters that Bob talked about last week, which is H-I-M, him, which is Christ, H-I-M, which means healing, identity, and mission. And this is the entire framework that we're going to look at all of the sacraments So really our whole life through. This is discipleship. So it's healing. It's the ongoing encounter with God's love that brings us in a wholeness communion, the identity, the truth of who we are in God. And we're going to talk about that. And then the mission that comes from that. So from every, you know, every healing, the the restoration of our identity comes a mission. It's, It's we're joined to Christ and his mission. And so, Chapter two is about how the sacraments restore us to wholeness. And the beautiful catechism quote, uh, catechism 1210, that says the seven sacraments touch all the stages and all the important moments of Christian life. They give birth and increase healing and mission to the Christian's life of faith. So there we go, written in the catechism, we see what Bob is bringing us on. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, maybe Heather, you could kind of start us off about the power of blessing and what this chapter talks about. That You know, it talks about the very first par- paragraph of the catechism, that God is blessed in himself. God is infinitely perfect and blessed in himself. And God only has blessings to give. He doesn't give us bad things. He doesn't give us hatred, darkness. He, he only gives us good things. And so what would you kind of like to start off with as we dive into this? Yeah, I just want to start off right there because I think so many of us actually don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And that's just an initial place to just go, oh, what do I believe? Like, is God Mm -hmm. a God of blessing or do I think that he is a God that is like cursing me in some way, that Mm -hmm. he wants actually bad things to happen to me too? And, And it often sounds more like this, oh yeah, God's doing this to teach me a lesson. And it's the tone in which we say it. It's not that God doesn't want to teach us lessons. He does. He's a good father, though. Like, I want to teach my children lessons because it's going to bring them life and it will help them along in their in their journey. But we can frame things with a tone that God is somehow the one that's hurting us, that's mm. causing us the most pain in our life, that it's this feeling of like, well, he could, he could do something, but he's not. So that means, and then we sort of make these assumptions about God's character. So that must mean that he wants me to suffer, that he wants to hurt me, that he doesn't want good things from me, that he's withholding from me, that that because he has all this power of what he could do and he isn't doing what I want or what I think I need, then that means he doesn't love me or that he's cruel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a good place to start to just go, wow, there's all kinds of misconceptions Mm -hmm. in my own heart or beliefs that I have about God, that he's not a God of blessing, that he's not a God who wants to bestow blessings and goodness and be generous with us and kind to us. So 
for, for me, that's been a place where I've been sitting for many years. What are the places in my heart where I have given over some ground there about who I believe God to be? And I have to keep checking myself, you know, like I've said this quite a few times, but that whole idea of like, that's not the kind of God we have Mm -hmm. for one saying that's not the kind of God we have, but also what is the kind Mm -hmm. of God we have? Mm -hmm. And then to get to know him in the purity of who he is. Mm -hmm. How about you, Michelle? Yeah, this, this book has really been so good. Like (laughs) I was like, forget the rest of you. It's really just for me. Just kidding. Not forget the rest of you. But like, (laughs) I feel like the Lord has spoken to, just gone to some deep fundamental truths that you know in your head, but really like it is translating into my heart. And I feel like one thing I loved about this chapter and it leads into the baptism chapter is this wrapped in goodness that the father is goodness Mm -hmm. up and down and, you know, the breath and the depth and the length of his goodness. And that is our root system. And so if that is our root system, that this is who God is, and this is even when he created us in the world, it says it was good. Goodness is the foundation place where we start. The way my mind was working when I was praying with it is like, okay, Lord, if you're good, what is your response to me? And what does my response need to be to you? And the word mm. just makes me tear up. But I was thinking about this. I was sitting in, in front of the blessed sacrament. Think about it. And he said, it's delight. You don't trust my delight in you and for you. And I was like, I don't. And therefore, like, how does that trickle down? Like when I treat people and other people as a duty instead of a delight, when I, Mm -hmm. people come in or there's interruptions in my day, does my face look and see them, you know, and you have that look like, there you are. Or is it like, oh my gosh, an interruption. And the Lord's like, I don't look at you as an interruption. I look at you as pure delight. And I'm always looking for you to look up at me. And like going back to like even attachment theory, you're born with, that's what we're looking at. Someone that's looking for us, but we have that Mm. person. We actually have three people, the Trinity that are always looking for us and search for us. And I think an invitation this Lent is to allow us to experience the delight of the Lord in us and through us and with us. And that is what brings lasting fruit in our lives. Sister, Mm. what about you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so tender. And I... Yeah, the Lord speaks in delight, and we're not overwhelming to Him. And I, I appreciate what you both are saying. And Heather, I think it's amazing, really. What, sometimes we don't know what we believe until it comes out of our mouth, or we see behavior patterns. And we could say one thing. I mean, you can have a doctorate in moral theology and, and understand very deep truths, theological truths, which are intellectual, but they have yet to penetrate the heart. Mm-hmm. And so when we're speaking about these you know, the healing of our intellect and the healing of our will and the healing of our emotions and just the healing of our belief system, because we will, we will always behave out of what we truly believe. Mm -hmm. And that is often very surprising for us. And I think even allowing ourselves to let the Lord delight in us can feel scary. Mm -hmm. It can feel risky. I've noticed in my own journey over the years that my certain like areas of darkness or my own areas of self-reliance are much more comfortable than the vulnerability it feels like of being delighted in or the vulnerability Mm -hmm. of being blessed by the Lord and not having to have a problem all the time, like not being addicted to our problems and our suffering, but being able to hold those places up and say, Lord, I'm a daughter of God and, and this is happening in my life and I need you to speak to this. And I, I, I I can't remember if I've told this story before, but the priest that mentored me, the priest, the reason, one of the reasons I'm a religious sister today is because of a priest that came into my life when I was in college that radically changed my life. And I can't tell you how many times he passed away very suddenly in a car accident many years ago. But when I was first beginning my religious journey and he was the head of this mission and we had all our priests were down, we had all the seminarians down there and religious sisters. And we would always have, we would go out like to Costco or to dinner or to Walmart or whatever it is. Father would always ask the barista or the waitress, you know, can I bless you? Mm. Can I, can I give you a blessing? And I can't tell you how many times I was like, well, this is not going to go well. Cause like, you know, I got purple hair and like all tatted up and things like that. Yeah. Like, and I tell you, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was so young at the time and I just was mortified, you know, and, and I tell you never once in all the years that I was with him and the hundreds of instances that I witnessed him do that, never once did anybody say no. Mm. Mm-hmm. Every single person was like, yeah, Father, can you bless me? Like, yeah, Padre, like, throw me down a blessing. Or can you pray for me? Or, mm-hmm. And just we, all of us want to be blessed. All of us want to be, we want to be blessed. We want to be delighted. And we want to know that there's a love greater than anything we could ever do to remove it. Like, and that's the ache of the human heart. And I think 
when we kind of allow the Lord to walk into those places, we can kind of see the places where that's true for us and then areas where it doesn't seem as true. And in page 17, in that very first chapter, Bob says, the goal is really beautiful. The goal of our spiritual life is to be transformed into the image of Christ so that we share in the divine intimacy that he enjoys with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And that's not just a concept, but you see Christ, how Jesus lives. Jesus doesn't ever live outside of the delight of the Father. And we could say, oh, it's because he doesn't sin, but sin is not our identity. Our identity is not sinner. Our identity is beloved son or daughter. We sin out of our brokenness, but that's not our identity. And so Christ is bringing us into the truth of our identity so we can go from moment to moment in the delight of the Father. And that's just like, that's radical way of life. It is a radical way of life. And I think it looks to us like, okay, our sin is not our identity. And we've said before, mm-hmm. like, okay, when like we use the Julian of Norwich quote, when the Lord looks at us, he doesn't see sin. He seems hurt. Mm-hmm. So when we look at the Lord, like in areas that we have been hurting is get curious about that and say, okay, like, mm-hmm. Lord, why am I hurting in this area? Or why don't I trust you in this area? Or what are the things that keep on coming up? And I think one of the hardest parts for myself is then having compassion towards myself in those areas, because I want to, like we said Mm -hmm. earlier, like that, you know, we need a revolution of tenderness. Like I want to strong arm myself or will myself instead of allowing the Lord to really penetrate deeply. I was even praying about like the fruits of the spirit in John 15, it says, if you, if you remain in me and me, and I was praying for different fruits, talking about fruits of the spirit, my spiritual director really tagged me on one of those. And so, but he made a really good comment. He said, Michelle, He said, if you look at that, like the fruits of the spirit, it's not just this fruit or that fruit. It's like one tree, the tree of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And he said, so if you're not exuding one fruit, really, you're probably not living to the fullness in all of the fruits. And he said, what you have to look at, you're looking at the fruit. He said, but you need to go back. And this is what Bob does so beautifully in all of his books is you have to go back to the connection. Where is your connection Mm -hmm. broken with the father? Where do you not trust him? And that's what it says in this chapter, like John Paul II, at the root of every human sin is the lie, which is a radical rejection of the truth contained in the word of the father. There's somewhere where I don't trust. There's somewhere where the Lord, I feel like the Lord's holding out on me. There's somewhere like, did he really say, did he really say back in the garden, I am good. Did he really say that he will never leave me? Did he really say like fill in the blank, you know? So I have to go back to the connection in my root system to look at, okay, like, why is this so hard Mm -hmm. in this area? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going under the surface is absolutely essential in the spiritual life and Many of us don't know how to do that. And the scripture that's coming to mind, is, but it's kind of a different nuance of it is, and we said it a couple of weeks ago, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from exactly. me. And I think sometimes we can say things like, oh, God is good, you know, all the time. God is good. But in our hearts, we might not even believe mm-hmm. that. But we don't know because we just keep saying things and we're, we're staying on the surface or maybe trying to like convince ourselves that this is what this is what we say when we're a good Catholic or we're a good Christian. But to go under the surface and see, well, what are the places that I may not believe this? Mm-hmm. And that I'm keeping God at an arm's length. These are really, really important questions to ask ourselves. I can't reiterate that enough. Don't stay on the surface with yourself. Mm-hmm. Because I think what's going on all over the place, we're talking about blessing and curse. And like the enemy is like heaping curses upon us. He's mm-hmm. heaping these lies that are deteriorating our self-worth and our, our identity and where we can firmly stand on our feet. And are we receiving the Father's blessing that heals all of those places? And I think for many of us, if we're unaware of what's going on, we're, we're not. We're not receiving. We're just like in a place of we're being wounded. Our identity is deteriorating. We don't know where to find ourselves. And we're white knuckling through life. And, and God wants us to be fully alive. I love this line where it says, Jesus' entire life is an ongoing participation in the Father's blessing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what if my life was just an ongoing participation in the Father's mm-hmm. blessing. That's what I want. And doesn't that sound not just intriguing, but like warm mm-hmm. and comforting mm-hmm. and safe? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, if I could be so connected there in the interior of my heart and my soul that I'm a beloved daughter, then it puts so many things in perspective. You know, I'm operating from a place of security and safety and where my identity is like wrapped in the one who truly sees mm-hmm. me. And mm-hmm. loves me and desires good things for me. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a game changer. Holy smokes. Mm. Well, and that is what you both are speaking of. That is the goal of the Christian mm-hmm. life. And I, you just think of Christ who's teaching us what it means to be human. He's teaching us what it means to be beloved, to be a beloved son or beloved daughter. And 
in that Jesus didn't, he didn't not suffer. It wasn't like, okay, God's my father. I'm just not going to suffer. He suffered. He took on everything, every brokenness he took on himself. And, but in that suffering, in the communion of the suffering, he didn't lose his identity. And I mean, I think if we look at our sorrowful mysteries, our sorrowful mysteries are usually the places where we've lost our identity. Mm -hmm. And Bob speaks about seven identity wounds on page 25 and the places where we experience suffering and it goes down to our identity. It distorts our identity. And so if you look at page 25, he talks about the seven identity wounds of, of rejection, which says I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, of abandonment, I'm all alone, nobody cares about me. Of powerlessness, I feel overwhelmed, I can't do anything. Of confusion, I don't understand, it doesn't make sense. The wound of fear, if I trust, I will be hurt, I'm not safe. The wound of shame, I'm bad, I'm dirty, I'm stupid, it's all my fault. And the wound of hopelessness, things will never change, I'm weary, there's no hope. And I think noticing even in our own hearts, maybe as we sit with those places, like you're saying, Heather, do not rush ahead. Just to notice for each one of us, we've all experienced all of these. We've all had, we, and we've all inflicted all of them on other people. Let's just all be honest. We've all done that. But there's going to be one, two, or three that are going to be really well known to us. And that's going to be the place where our hearts have been broken the deepest, places where we have our strongest belief system, our strongest self-defense mechanisms, and the places where the enemy just wants to go after us right there. And also the places where for all of it, God's going to give us double honor. Right? So it's like the gift and the wound lay side by side. And I know for me, I have three. So rejection, abandonment, and shame are the three that have gone deepest in my own life. And I, I really believe like everything else that happens in my life is just variations on a theme. <laughs> you know, and and so noticing where those wounds, where people have knowingly and unknowingly inflicted, inflicted them upon me and the places I've done that myself, where those places have begun to tell me different stories about what God tells me. And then we begin to operate out of that belief system. And our life takes on like a it, you know, takes on these aspects of the curse, right? Versus the blessing. And so what Jesus is doing is he's teaching us, yeah, he's teaching us how to be human. He's teaching us what it means to love and how to be loved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I think is such a beautiful setup for, okay, then we go into the first sacrament that Bob talks about, like the power, he mm -hmm. goes, talks about the power of blessing, but then he goes into baptism, which I absolutely love the sacrament of baptism. One thing that our parish mm -hmm. does, which I love that they do this is you can do private baptisms, but our pastor, Father James would rather it be a public thing. Like they incorporate the baptism during um, Sunday mass, which I absolutely love. I mean, I think baptism is the way the church is, is like the sacrament of the church telling us we are beloved because that's what Jesus mm -hmm. did. It's like, we are beloved. We, you know, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased, you know? And it's so interesting. Jesus was baptized and he went into the desert. And what is the first thing that Satan attacks him as his identity? If you are really the son of God, mm -hmm. like the first place mm -hmm. he comes is our identity. And so like we, we almost have to go back to our baptism when our identity is being questioned and remember those baptismal vows that we took. This is who I am. I am a priest. I am a prophet. I am a king. The light of Christ comes in me. I'm anointed. Like we had a baptism like two weeks ago and I even love the question, what name do you give this child? And I'm like thinking to myself, like, okay, liturgically, can we do this? Like a little bit even more like what name you gave this child why did you give this person this name what does this name symbolize there is power in every name like heather always uses that catechism reference about the power of the name of jesus but there's power in our names one of my favorite nicknames that i call sister miriam is rose of sharon mm -hmm. and it's from the scripture isaiah you know and even when i say it like i just said it she starts smiling like there's a look that she gets in her eyes mm -hmm. you know there's a certain name when i call my husband a certain name like that he just like there's a light that comes in his eyes you know there's power in our name. And then there is something about when that smell, when they anoint the a child or when you need a baptism, chrism oil, like there's that smell. It's like the fragrance of heaven is permeated on this person. Mm -hmm. Like this is a powerful thing. But I think mm -hmm. for us as baptism, one of the things that we do before we receive the sacrament in its fullness is we renounce the things where evil has tried to steal our identity. Amen. So we mm -hmm. all there's a renunciation that has to happen in our lives for the beloved and our mm -hmm. identity to come into the fullness. And this hit me really hard. Like sister does such a good job about renouncing different things almost daily, like of different things that come, mm -hmm. oh, you know, day. every day. Mm -hmm. And so it was like it really 
and I do, but it's on occasion. And when I was reading this chapter, it hit me so hard. Like Michelle, you have to renounce, like you are in war. Like you have to renounce the things that are coming Mm -hmm. against you. You can't just lay idle in these areas. Like this is an attack Mm -hmm. and not to be like looking for a demon behind every corner, but be like, no, this is just part of it. Renounce it. So you can accept the fullness that I have for you. Heather, what are your thoughts? Yeah. And for me, just on a very practical level, scripture has become such a a huge weapon for me in this particular area. And it can be as simple as, and I actually put this in in my book, it's like a list of identity scriptures that root us in the truth of what God is saying about who we are. I just Googled it. It was like scriptures about identity and God, you know, in this whole list, like, Mm -hmm. thank God for Google sometimes, you know, because it could be like a really helpful sometimes. And so it just, this list came up and I've been sitting with those scriptures for a long time. And I just keep going average. It's the same kind of idea. And I'm just using scripture as the truth of God, because sometimes if we've really distanced ourselves from the truth, we don't even know what it is. We don't even know how to say it. So it's like using God's own word to speak the truth into the lie for me has been so powerful. And this is what starts to restore like our trust in who God is. You know, that phrase, like I'm hanging on every word they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so often I'm hanging on every word the enemy says. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there hanging on every word he says. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Adam and Eve were doing in the garden. There came a point where it's like he was whispering and they were like, and it was sort of this background noise. And then all of a sudden, They just started to hang on every word he said, but I'm not hanging on every word the father is saying to me Mm -hmm. often. I'm just Mm -hmm. like allowing myself to marinate in lies Mm -hmm. Mm. and in destruction and in curses, which block our ability to receive the father's blessing because we think it's true. Like (laughs) we get to a point where like, oh, this is now the truth. This is who I am, or this is who God is. And all these false images of ourself and of God and the enemy is just like nailed it. I got him. Mm-hmm. And I think for us to undo that, we have to let God's word speak and take root in our heart over and over again. So it's like, instead of hanging on every word, the enemy says, how can I put myself in a place and create environments in my day where I can hang on every word that God is saying? Mm-hmm. And and for me, my quickest go-to is scripture. It's right there. <laughs> His words are right there. Heather, I think that's so true because Satan's like a marketer's dream. He is the best market. He can oh, makes it. He appears so as an angel of light. So he makes it look mm-hmm. so good. I mean, he is like a marketer's dream. Like he's got a sales pitch and we like just attach it. And I think for mm-hmm. us, like we have to get into that spiritual discipline of saying, I'm a beloved child of God and I will renounce anything that stands in the way of that. Bottom line, Mm -hmm. bottom line. Mm -hmm. Sister, what are your Mm -hmm. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that Bob actually gives us that formula. Yes. And so if you're listening, if you're listening right now and you're like, I've never done anything like this, I don't even know what you're talking about. At the end of the chapter on baptism, chapter three, Bob literally has us renew our baptismal vows, which Mm -hmm. you can do by yourself or with your small group. And you can do that every day. That might be something you want to do this week is just every day, renew your baptismal vows. And then renouncing the places where we've allowed rejection, the wound of rejection to come in and affect our identity and tell us a different story. And how many times have we, I know myself and just journeying with other people, how many times have we felt, we have, we felt like the lies are more true than the truth. Oh, and totally. even like the lies say something like the lie of like, I don't belong or nobody loves me. Mm-hmm. And that might feel so true because we've had experiences where people have maybe literally said to us, you don't belong here. Like you're not one mm-hmm. of us. You don't belong here. Get out of here. Or I don't love you. Or it's by, you know, it's, it's interesting in the penitential, right? We say, you know, in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I failed mm-hmm. to do. And we've all done that. We've all had it inflicted on us, like those curses of a word and deed. And it feels more true. And so then we're invited to do this and we're like, but this feels more true. And this is one of the beautiful things. I'm just going to get on my soapbox here. This is one of the beautiful things about the Catholic faith, y'all. The objective truth, the objective truth is what anchors us that our feelings are telling us important things. They're telling us what we believe about ourselves. They're telling us all kinds of things, but they're not always telling us the objective truth. And I think we really have to stand firm. I've done that so many times. Like in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the lie that nobody loves me and that nobody cares about Mm me. And it might feel more true than the truth of Christ is with me and there are people in my life that love me. And over time, as we announce that objective truth, which is indelibly marked in our baptism that nobody can take away, that is something that we can always go back to. At, at, at any time, like we're in, like say what's something happening in your marriage or in your church family and your coworkers and you feel left out and you feel like people don't understand you. 
And, and we can experience that and we can honor those feelings. And then we can come to the truth of like, all right, Lord, what are you saying to me? Because the truth is I belong to you. And that's eternally true. And what is eternal is most true. And I, I think I, I know I've had so many people, I was thinking about so many people in my life have challenged me in love where I was giving up in these places and they, God bless them. They would not let me get away with that. And they would say, you know, this, that's not true about mm-hmm. you. And I know there's part of you that wants to hold on to that because it's like a security blanket, but I'm going to invite you over time to make the truth, the true security. Mm-hmm. Cause that's the only thing that's going to last. And I, I just, amen, man, like, amen. God bless the Lord. <laughs> just God bless the Lord for giving us sacraments, like the matter and the form people that it's not just imagination. We don't have to imagine like it happened and that changes everything. So done now. Yeah, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> I love your soapbox because like baptism heals the wound of rejection, which is like the core wound. Yes. And I was so, this is so funny. One of my daughters, my daughter's in middle school and one of her close friends really wanted to go to the mall. And my, my daughter was at a volleyball tournament all weekend. And so she was supposed to go with another group of their friends. Well, both of them, the girls got their phones taken away for some reason. So she's texting him and they did like not texting her back. Mm-hmm. So she feels like she's completely being rejected, which she wasn't. And my daughter texts her is because one of her close friends she's like, well, I was, I was there. I promise you, I wouldn't ghost you. And she's like, give them the benefit of the doubt. I wouldn't ghost you. And I would go with you. But I was laughing, you know, cause the mom and I were talking about <laughs> it and we, you know, it, but she's like, we were laughing. We're like, aren't we still all middle school girls in some way? Like there's Amen. something about us that like, <laughs> like we're all middle school girls. We just want to be included. We want people to see us. We want to be able to long, or we've had that rejection in some way, shape or form. And this is mm-hmm. the church's way. Like you were saying, sister, get on that soapbox. The church's way to saying, maybe your external circumstances have happened, but the truth, the greater truth is that you are my beloved and I choose mm-hmm. you and I'm coming after you and I will never leave you. You know, that is the greater truth. And I think one of the things that i Really read the part where Cancel and Mesa talks in baptism, the power of the sacraments. Like they are just not these magical rites, he calls them, but they are powerful instruments. And what happens when these powerful forms are received in grace? They are transformational. You really don't need to listen to a podcast or the speaker. Like the deeper reality is the sacraments of the Catholic Church. That is the power. Mm -hmm. True. It's so true. Yeah, I think it's important for us to note that the enemy is working really hard in our life to tear us away from this very, very thing, Mm -hmm. that we belong to God and that we are adopted sons and daughters of the Father who loves us with all that he is. And the enemy, like we might think, well... You guys don't understand. I thought this myself. I'm like, you don't understand my story. I mean, these things must be true because they've happened so many times. Let's say rejection, for mm-hmm. example. So it must be true that I'm easy to walk away mm-hmm. from, that I'm not very lovable mm-hmm. because it's happened to me mm-hmm. so many times that, that this is what goes on in my mind, mm-hmm. or it used to anyway, and God's healing this. Mm-hmm. And I think we we forget it's because the enemy's really good. It's like what we were talking about before, but like he is coming at us with a story mm-hmm. as well. God is writing this beautiful story, this beautiful love story. The enemy is also writing a mm-hmm. story. It's a story full of hate and curses and destruction and lies. And he is writing a story over our life and he's singing us this little out of tune song that is buzzing in our ears at all times. And it's good for us to sit and go, what are the things that I'm hearing? Because many of them will come clear to us. And and I think looking at this little chart, I'm just giving people some practicals because I don't want it to stay in our heads. Please Mm -hmm. don't let this stay in your head. Don't Mm -hmm. just hear this, like sit down and allow God to come into these places. Let his light break through in these dark places. But we have to acknowledge what are the things that I believe? And we're just going to start with identity Mm -hmm. this week. What are the things that I believe? What has the enemy been saying to me about this? And how how much am I believing that more than the truth of God? Mm-hmm. It's a great place for mm-hmm. us to start this week. Mm-hmm. That's true. And I appreciate, Heather, how at the very beginning you were speaking about, we're not mm-hmm. going to do this alone, mm-hmm. so we're going to go with the Lord. So we're just going to let... So I think a great prayer this week is just say, all right, Holy Spirit, all right, Jesus, God the Father, just open to me. What do I believe about myself? Just tell me what I need to know when I need to know it. And just maybe sit with each of the lies this week and just see like, how true does that feel to you? And of course, like the, the, each one of those lies says something very specific to each one of us and it has many tenants. Like it's got little branches, little tendrils that, but what do you notice what happens in your heart when you sit with those things of like, yeah, what am I, Lord, what am mm-hmm. I really believing? And what do I really believe about you? And 
and then allowing the Lord to speak the truth to us. And something we're going to come back to at the end of every episode is um, on page 30, there's a beautiful graph that Bob has put together about about this healing identity and mission. And so, for instance, this week, I'll just talk about the baptism. Uh, uh, Michelle mentioned it already, that he, the baptism heals the wound of rejection. So we can apply any place, my dear friends, we have experienced rejection from other people, from life, from ourselves, where we self-reject, which is one of the most toxic forms of rejection is when we reject ourselves. We reject the little parts of us. We reject our childhood parts. We reject the parts we don't like. And we do the same thing to other people. It's just a mirror of what we do to ourselves. And so baptism continually, continually heals the wounds of rejection. So what happens in our baptism is we take on the identity of Christ, in Christ, of the Father's beloved. And so from that identity, so the more we allow, and this is a lifelong mission, like we say all the time, this is a process, not an event. This is a lifelong mission of allowing our identity to be restored and to be affirmed and secure in Christ. And from that identity comes the mission with Christ of imitating the Father's love. So how am I supposed to, and we can ask ourselves the inverse, like how am I supposed to imitate the Father's love? Mm -hmm. It's like doing virtue management when I don't have the root system to support it. How am I gonna imitate the Father's love if I'm uh, continually rejecting myself or rejecting other people or rejecting life, all the things that we reject. I'm not talking about the things that need to be rejected. There are some things, we're rejecting lies, we're rejecting darkness, we're rejecting sin, amen. But if I'm if I'm rejecting the goodness and the blessing and the, and the part of me and I'm taking those wounds in, it's going to be very difficult. And mm -hmm. I think this brings a lot of compassion for ourselves and other people of like, oh, I've been trying for a long time just by kind of the act of just, I'm mm -hmm. just going to try to do this until I can do it. I'm failing miserably at it. It's like, oh, it's it's self-reliance. I'm like, all right, Lord, please, I, I, wanna, I want to come into my truth, of the truth of my identity, Lord, and I want to imitate your love. So please help me do that. Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. So, um yeah, any any last things, ladies, before we kind of jump into, and our episodes are going to be longer this line. I hope that's okay with everybody. We 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 just want to spend time in these places. So yeah, and that's practically speaking, as we're making this in Lent, there's three characteristics of Lent: prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So it's like Sister was saying, and Heather was saying, prayer. Take this to prayer. Look at your connection. Look underneath the roots. Like this is a time between you and the Lord. Fasting. If we can fast from curses. Fast where we condemn ourselves or fast where we complain or condemn others. Like the very beginning of the chapter, fasting from judgment of others, like Bob was saying, that Pharisee spirit. And almsgiving, giving to our neighbor. Who are the people around you that you just need to bless out loud, bless and affirm who they are? Mm -hmm. I realize I can get in the, the a really easy habit of, especially with my kids, nitpicking. Okay, can you pick up that? Can you do that? All right, we need to do it, like get very task mode. And like I said, instead of delight mode, how can I bless them with my words this week? And so just the prayer, fasting, mm -hmm. and almsgiving. But keep it simple. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but just praying with the Lord, fasting from judgment, mm -hmm. blessing, and almsgiving as our almsgiving. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to slip this in here right at the end. And it was part of our conversation before we even started, but I think it's important to say, and we can talk about it more through the series, but we can't force ourselves to trust mm -hmm. and trust is the foundation of being able to receive. And so if there's places that we're having a hard time receiving from the father, mm -hmm. receiving his blessing, there's likely areas where we don't trust him, where we're afraid and we don't know if he's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to let God love us. And and that heals, like allowing God to speak his words of love and kindness and mm -hmm. tenderness to us. Even if we're just reading it in scripture because we don't even know how to hear his voice, you can start there. But that builds trust because we start to realize he is someone who has character and he is who he says he is. Um, so I just want to slip that in there at the end for some reflection for us. Mm. Those are both so good. I appreciate both the practical and uh, yeah, the truth of the tender places of our heart, which we all have. Like all the three of us, we have like we have those places ourselves, places where we don't trust yet, places where it seems scary, places where we've been kind of quote unquote doing this mm -hmm. by myself for a long time, and and those things take time, and it's only yeah, it's only the tenderness and then love that heals us. Yeah, um, sister, I know that there's yeah. some people that would just but right now. I'm, I'm sure their hearts are just longing for a blessing, and I just wondered if maybe you could pray. Mm -hmm for our listeners, just a blessing for them sure. before we end. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. Amen. So I'm just going to invite you, um, just wherever you find yourself right now, just to take a deep breath all the way in in through your nose and just out through your mouth. 
And let's just take another deep breath all the way in and all the way out. And I just ask you, Lord, as these places stir in our heart that you would speak to each one of us. What do you want us to know, Lord, about the truth of who we are in your love? And your love for us. And I just want you to know how very good you are. That you are meant to be here. That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And from all eternity, God has beheld you in his love, and his love never changes. His love never ceases. His love never shrinks away or overwhelms. His love for you is kind, and it's rich, and it's beautiful. And he sees you, and he knows you, and he understands you, and he delights in you. You are so very good, and you are wanted, and you are chosen, and you are sacred and holy. And may the kindness of the Lord's love wrap itself around every part of your heart. Places that are afraid or unbelieving. Places that are held in shame or darkness. May his love come and meet you there. For he knows all things and sees all things and he loves you. And may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And we just make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oof. So good. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you. Well, my dear and wonderful friends, should we talk about our one things for the week? Michelle, would you like to share with our listeners? My one thing is I woke up this morning and I've been thinking about it is praying for all the moms with young littles in that season where they're not sleeping, where you have newborns Mm. or babies or toddlers that are not sleeping and you're in the trenches where nobody can do anything for themselves, including put themselves in their car seat, put on shoes and you can't even go to the bathroom or shower by yourself. (laughs) And um, I was praying because there's a lot of young moms in my life right now. And a lot of the young adults that we have mentored through the years are now becoming first and second time moms. And they're just in the trenches. And gosh, I remember that season so well. And just know that I'm praying for you, that the Lord sees you. And the word I got was El Roy, you know, which is the description in the Hebrew of with God, with Hagar in the Old Testament. He's the God who sees. He's the God who sees you, like you are being seen. You're not insignificant. The season is one of the most important seasons in your life. And I know some of you feel hidden or forgotten or like, Lord, when am I going to sleep through the night? He sees you. He sees you. And his Mm. breast and his presence are with you. So to all the moms in that young Mm. season, you know, my prayers are with you and for you. Mm. So sister, what about you? Well, I have this week, uh, you know what I was thinking of? This is like totally spur of the moment, but you guys would know this song. Oh, yes. You know this the song, There is Power in the Name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Just, does Tasha Cobb sing that? Like, there's like this just like... Oh, girl, she sings that with break uh, the one of the girls with Break Every Chain and she blends it together. Yes. yes. We should totally... Put, I just want... I just, I'm, that's right now. I just... Somebody make that my one thing. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know where we can find that, but like, mm-hmm. there's so many versions of that, but like, her just like oh, earthy, yeah. just passionate, like 
there is oh i don't even try it now i don't even try it but like oh it's like i've i've had that cranked up so many times in my life in different seasons of my life like turn that up because i need that uh but actually it's actually david bensinger's favorite song believe it or not <laughs> I love that. I love Worship that. song, that is. Oh. oh, that's wonderful. It's called Break Every Chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll put it in the show notes. There's, I'm pulling it up right now, sister. Break every just... chain. Crank, crank that up. Crank that up. But my other one thing is the one I actually had planned um, is the actual the National Eucharistic Revival Newsletter in Congress. So I'm not sure if you knew the speaker of the sacraments that America, United States of America, is having a Eucharistic Congress next summer, 2024, July 2024, and they are preparing for it. And it's going to be amazing. They're hoping 80,000 people come to this. And to prepare for that, they have put together just all kinds of initiatives all over the U.S. It's happening in your diocese right now throughout the next couple of years. They have also put out a newsletter that's updated every week. So I'm just going to invite you to go to eucharisticrevival.org. We're going to put the link on it, so don't worry. And then there's a Heart of the Revival newsletter. And just to invite you to sign up for that, you're going to get weekly updates, just new prayers, all kinds of things, just to really bring us on the journey. They also have the Eucharistic Congress website that I'll put on, and then the pilgrimage to get to its Indianapolis, a pilgrimage, and then also all their social media accounts too. So you can really immerse yourselves with some beautiful things. So God bless Bishop Cousins and all the people working on the the Eucharistic revival. God bless y'all. I think it's going to be really beautiful, Amen. and I really believe it's mm. the work of the Holy Spirit. So, Amen. Awesome. There you go. All the all, things. all the things. Heather Kim, dear, yes. what would you like to offer our lovely listeners? My one thing is also a song. It's called Holy by Martin Smith and Carrie Job. It just came out. I was awake in the middle of the night and there I saw it and I put it on and I was like, woof, just like whisked up into the throne room. It was so beautiful. It's also, I put it on my playlist called Only Jesus, which is my favorite play- playlist that I have on mm. pretty much every day. So you're welcome to see that too. I'll put the link mm. for that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, dear friends. Here we go. We're on this journey together. Take your time and we will go hand in hand to see the Lord. So until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend and leave us a review? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one things, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful coffee mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of the content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Body Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through the Patreon website, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier for you. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member, and you will receive bonus content every month, such as recipes, music playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information at patreon.com slash abidingtogetherpodcast. Thank you so much, and God bless you.